east of Ukraine uh, is uh, uh, aimed, as was announced from the very beginning, to fully liberate the Donetsk and Lugansk republics. Ukraine says Russian offensive and those forces began. Here's what we know. Ukrainians have been expecting a renewed Russian offensive in the eastern region known as Donbass. And now Ukraine's president says it's underway. President Volodymyr Zelensky said in this evening address that Russian forces have begun the new offensive against cities in the east and south, adding that the, the substantial part of the Russian army is now taking part in the military office of operation. Today we can already say that the Russian armed forces have begun the assault on the Donbass, which is been preparing for Zelensky said. A senior U.S. defense official said on Tuesday that Russia is conducting limited offensive operations southwest on Donetsk and south of Izium, which is our below to larger offensive operations. Russia has had its eye on Donbass for years. The Donbass region in eastern Ukraine, along the border with Russia, has long been interest of the Kremlin in 2014 after the anti-government protests broke out across Ukraine. Two breakaway regions in the Donbass were under the control of Russian back separatists, the Lohan's People's and Republic of the Donetsk People's Republic. These two regions comprise parts of the larger Donbass and Donetsk provinces that make up the Donbass. Russia denied sending any ports into Donbass to boost those. The insurgency in the military being used, but they claim as the this report the invasion of Russian present body of the discussion officially recognized the separatist republics who proposed this loyal to the Kremlin had been in an intense standoff with the Ukrainian military. Putin then used the unrest and unrest of pretext for the wider invasions of the country, saying without any evidence that we have protecting people in the region from genocide by the Ukrainian government. The battle for the Donbass has begun. Big battle for the Donbass has started Ukrainian lawmaker in a so soon. But others have been so definitive that the anticipated assault has come in and the earnest. The Pentagon says Russia is still conducting shipping operations or laying groundwork for the offensive by sending in more battalions, artillery bombs, and missiles. Meanwhile, a large portion of the Ukrainian army is already in place and will soon be getting not more heavy weaponry from the U.S. and the NATO in the form of artillery. Helicopters, drones, and armored vehicles, Russian rockets, and artillery shields built on multiple Ukrainian cities Tuesday, which Ukrainian media report an explosion. He raids the range across hundreds of miles. Crisis, which is a pretty big sort of, you know, line item on his agenda there. And to better coordinate how to hold Russia accountable, that is, bring justice, you know, the allegations of war crimes and Putin even possibly being a war criminal, according to a lot of the Western leaders, uh, wanting to bring him to justice. How do you do that? Um, beyond that, is have the sanctions reached a limit? We heard Putin yesterday sort of, you know, smugly sitting there giving an economic speech where he said, we're fine, the ruble's stabilized, everything's fine, we're actually, unemployment's low again, things are stabilizing. So, you know, hey, West, guess what? Those sanctions you impose, right back at you. You're the ones having the bad employment, the, the, the worsening economy right now, the high inflation, the higher prices. You're the ones who are going to suffer the most from all of this. So he's very smug. So the sanctions, unless you do the oil and gas, yeah, they've reached the limit. As for the weapons, uh, yeah, we're also seeing limits to that. We're now seeing Ukraine basically begging, saying we need a heavy weapon. We can't get fighter jets, which it would love to get. It's not going to get that from the West. Will it get tanks? Uh, Germany's been balking at some of the heavy weapon rate. Some other countries are. Uh, and Putin perhaps senses some cracks in the edifice, fissures. Of course, the West, Biden, they will be presenting a picture of unity at, at Ukraine's time of need. They are all together. They are ready to continue supplying Ukraine with the weapons it needs, with the help it needs, the financial support it needs. But the reality, and perhaps Putin senses it, is that maybe the Western ability to help Ukraine will run thin as more and more the war grinds on. It becomes a war of attrition, and the political will among an already 
divided Europe, even if that isn't the official line, a divided Europe starts to kick in and we start to see Ukraine more and more at, <laughs> at loose ends when it comes to getting help that it really desperately says it needs from the West. Doug, thanks for that. Doug Herbert. There's another coming. Wait, there'll be three. Stand by. Striking to the west, that's two. What we should get at least plane? one more. That wasn't a plane, it was a cruise missile. That was a cruise missile. Yeah. Wait for one more, they're fired in yeah, 30 second intervals. They fire them in 30 second intervals. Smoke. Right, we got them. Stand by. Three, cruise missile, caliber. Look. Stand by. Five, six, eight, nine. 10, 11, yeah, there 12, it is. There's 13, the smoke. 13. There's the smoke. Here. That's three. So three cruise missiles. Yeah. Ministry is demanding that Ukraine surrender the southern port city of Mariupol. Russia's forces have all but destroyed it. Ukrainian soldiers are refusing to lay down their arms. Ukraine's president, Volodymyr Zelensky, says that his countrymen in Mariupol will, in his words, fight absolutely to the end. Люблю, люблю жить у моря. Я здесь родилась, город свой обожала. Ну, теперь не знаю. Во-первых, же пенсия. Вышла на пенсию. Что будет с пенсией, я не знаю. В общем, пугает неизвестность. Вот что пугает. Неизвестность, неустроенность, потому что невозможно постирать. Нет воды, нет электричества. Воду уносим издалека. Нет такого здоровья у меня, чтобы носить эту воду. A deadline for Ukrainian troops holed up in Mariupol to lay down their arms came and went on Sunday. Russia issued the ultimatum for the outnumbered soldiers who have been defending the smoldering Azovstal steel works. But several hours after the deadline, in the early hours of the morning, and there was no sign of surrender. Azovstal, one of Europe's largest metallurgical plants, has become a last stand for the defending forces. Moscow says its soldiers have cleared the urban areas of Mariupol and are almost completely in control. Having failed to overcome Ukrainian resistance in the north, the Russian military is now focused on Donbass. Capturing the eastern region's main port city would be a major strategic prize for Russia. Connecting territory it holds in Donbass with the Crimea region it annexed in 2014. 
Ukraine's President Volodymyr Zelensky said his government was in contact with the troops at Azovstal. Speaking on Saturday, he accused Russia of trying to destroy everyone in Mariupol and said killing the soldiers would put paid to peace efforts. It's unclear how many soldiers are inside the steelworks. Satellite images have shown smoke and fire coming from the area, which is riddled with tunnels underneath. Meanwhile, Russia continued with long-range attacks on other locations in Ukraine, all part of what it calls a special military operation. Local media reported an explosion in Kyiv, though the capital's deputy mayor said air defense systems had thwarted Russian attacks. The mayor of the nearby city, Brovary, said a missile attack had damaged infrastructure. According to the RIA news agency, Russia said it had destroyed an ammunition factory near the capital. of the rocket, bomb, and artillery fire that Russia is conducting round the clock. But the Russian army has failed to seize Mariupol completely, all thanks to the courage of those units, both the Ukrainian armed forces and other military formations that are there. Those holdouts are making what could be their last stand here in the vast Azovstal industrial zone. With them are civilians, including children, encircled and low on food. They know that if Mariupol falls, Russian forces tied up here will be free to move on to other targets, such as the town of Rubizhne, now on the front line and under constant shelling. This woman lives in a nearby village, or what's left of it. She describes what it's like being in no man's land. We don't even know where the shelling comes from. We wait for it from there, thinking that the Ukrainian army will protect us, but then it comes from there. There's shelling from all directions. Elsewhere in Ukraine's east, soldiers prepare to hold the line against whatever the Russian army throws at them. Our motivation is our home, the motherland. We can't take a single step back, we can't retreat. That's the whole secret of our work. And with Ukraine's president saying Russia's long-awaited offensive has begun, that work may have entered a deadly new phase. Ukraine in the capital. Welcome, I'm Matthias. And what are you hearing about this Russian assault on the east? If I will have to fight for Ukraine, so I think I, I, I will stay and I will do what I need to do. If I'm called up, I think I'm ready, even though I've never held a weapon in my life. But everything can be learned, step by step. I'm following the IMSA, yes, that said no, no harm to any living creature. I did have some personal hate or uh, desire to use violence like right against people but uh, well if uh, if there was a if there was no option well uh, I'm interesting in defending this land from intruders and there's lots of other interesting ways of uh, doing this currently I'm working working as a, as a hairdresser, uh, it's my profession. Uh, I'm a sport journalist and uh, I've just arrived from uh, Beijing Olympics like on 23rd of uh, February and like next, uh, next morning 
the war started. <laughs> I'm a TV presenter on our public broadcaster. We evacuated from Kyiv and we're continuing to work on the information front. It's a very important moment now. Refusing to surrender the Azovstal steel plant, one of the last known pockets of resistance in Mariupol. And now it's the focus of Russian bombardment in the flattened port city as Moscow steps up its offensive to take the east of Ukraine. Alongside what's left of the city's resistance, there are also reportedly more than a thousand civilians taking shelter underground. There are hundreds of civilians in the Azovstal factory. Among them are many women, children and the elderly. Russian occupiers are aware that civilians are here, yet they are still dropping bunker buster bombs, rockets and every possible artillery shell, including from warships. 